Okay, so let's go ahead and walk through this sliding rod problem. This has been giving everybody lots of trouble and it, it comes back to this main equation that you can get the velocity of any point of an object from any other point on the object if you know the relative rotational velocity. So these three quantities, they're vectors. So like here was the example from the note. So if I have something sliding down the wall and sliding across the floor, and let's say I know what A is doing, but I don't know what B is doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend like the entire rod is going forward. So we're going to take VA and we're going to apply VA to the entire rod. So we're pulling the entire rod forward. And then we're going to rotate around point A. So it's like A is the center of rotation. So it's the whole thing is rotating around. So this is the relative velocity right here. And if I add those two together, so the entire thing going forward, and then the rotational motion around point A, these two vectors add together to B sliding down the wall. Okay, and, and velocities, these are cross products. So if I want to get what B relative to A is doing, that is omega cross R. There's, there's a couple different ways to do this. So, so this is what was on the practice test. And you'll notice that some of these answers only have one cross product and others have two. And that is because some of these are measuring the point relative to the instantaneous center of rotation and others are me measuring the velocity relative to other points on the bar itself. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and talk real quick about the easier solution. I think most people were able to see the instantaneous center of rotation. So for our case, we have a counterclockwise angular velocity. So this would mean it's in, it's in the positive k direction, okay? It's rotating around that k axis that's coming out of the board. And that would mean if you, if you follow that rotational motion around, A is actually moving to the right. So it's like somebody is pushing A along the floor. And then B is, in this case, sliding up the wall. So if you consider the directions of which way A and B are going, to find the instantaneous center of rotation, and remember, velocity is always perpendicular to what it is rotating around. So if you have rotational motion, the velocity is kind of tangent to that rotational motion. So if we just draw a line here that is perpendicular to the velocity for, for each of these cases, that is going to allow us to find our instantaneous center of rotation. So in this case, if I, if I bring this right over from point B and right over from point A, hopefully you can see that this bar, it's going to be rotating. The entire thing is acting like it's rotating around this point. So one way to get the velocities is we are, again, we're going to go from the point of rotation to each of these areas. So if we go from this point, let's call this A, B, C, let's call this point D. So it's going to be rotating around point D. So I can get the velocity of B by saying omega cross R. So if I look for over here, which one has an R that is in the I direction, so we'll say this is going to be X and Y, and then we'll make Z coming out of the board in this case. So if we have something that is L long in the X direction, let's see, so that's going down H, so here we are, right here. This one right here is going to give us the velocity of B.
So omega cross r. So omega is wrapped around the k direction. It's in the positive k direction. And then our position vector is going from d over to b. So this one is going to be, we can just, and I think most people were getting these velocities. It was, yeah, it was these other ones that were, okay, so this is VB. Let's just do these easy ones real quick. If I go down, let's use a different color here. So from D to A. So in this case, when we take omega cross R, we're going down in the negative Y direction. So here we go. If we go down H, negative Y direction, the same thing, this R cross omega, that's going to get us the velocity of A. And if you crank through this cross product, you'll see that it is indeed, it will give you something in the I, in the positive I direction here. Okay, so this is equal to velocity of A. And then the little bit tricky one, so over here for C. So if I go from D to C, and then the velocity is going to be perpendicular to that lever arm. So this is going to be the velocity of C. And this is the radius. Now C is the center of mass. And so it's going to be halfway through H and halfway through L to get over there. So we're going to the right and we're moving down. So that's going to be plus, plus I direction, negative J direction to get this. So that is going to be right here. So really pay attention to the sign. So we're going forward in the x direction, down in the y direction. That's our position vector. Plus half L in the x, minus half H in the y. And then that will be our final, um, our, our final velocity C. Okay, so those are kind of the easy ones out of this that were done with respect to the instantaneous center of rotation. Let's go ahead and look at the other scenarios, and that's where instead of taking this with respect to D, which is zero, so it turns into just a rotational motion, now we're going to look at the, the relative velocities of like A relative to B or C relative to B or something like that. So this is going to be more along the lines of, of this sort of scenario. So VA is not zero. We're not just looking at rotational motions now. We're looking at adding these two pieces together. Okay, so here's the example in the book. Here we flipped it around a little bit. <clears throat> so we're going to, and let's do the same thing, right? Let's look at the velocity of B is equal to what A is doing and then B relative to A. So what we have, if we think through, so we have B is going up. So we know the direction of it. And B is going to be equal to what A is doing. So A is sliding along the floor. So here's A. And then this relative velocity, this is where we're going to have to think through the rotational motion a little bit. So let's just, let's start with VA. Okay, so if the overall velocity of B is equal to VA, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm actually going to apply that VA to the entire rod. So if I think about how it would move, and this isn't physically how it's moving, like it's not going to actually go through the wall or anything, but it's, it's these two combinations that will get it to its final position. But this is what we're doing initially. So we're taking the whole bar and moving it straight forward, like everything is just going in a translational motion with A. And then after it is moved straight forward to its new location, the new piece that we're going to have to do 
is we're going to take it and we're going to rotate it up to this to this new position. Let me see if I can get this. Okay, so this this is the new the new piece of it. So we're going to to take it and we're rotating around A. So remember the direction of the velocity for that. And this is we're taking one little piece at a time. So so the direction of this B relative to A it's perpendicular to the to the lever arm to that radius. So we're going from A to B. So that's our position vector. Omega is wrapping around the k direction. And if I add these two vectors together, so this is kind of that that purple vector. If I add these two vectors together, I will get what B is doing. So if I if I kind of take take these guys, B is equal to A, and then we're going to add on to that the rotational motion. So if we add those vectors together, we'll get B going straight up. <clears throat> what that um, that cross product looks like, and I think maybe that's what's what's tripping people up. So omega is wrapped around the k direction. And the direction of this, so let me just copy this over. So think about which direction our r is going. So this is our, this purple vector from a to b. And so it's going to have this positive kind of x component and a positive y. So if we go from A to point B, what this ends up being in the cross product is going to be going forward L in the x direction and then going up H in the y direction. And if we if we crank through this cross product, we will get this vector right here, VB. So you look in the I direction, it ends up being J times K minus K times J. So it's going to be negative in the I direction. So let me just take this. So if you have this, um, so here's our B with respect to A, right? Here's our our vector here. And you can see that that vector, it's going up in the j direction and left. So negative i, positive j. And you can see that from the cross product. So j, remember in the cross product, j starts at the opposite side. So you have omega l in the j direction. And then for the i piece of it, you have a negative omega h. So it's those are the pieces that you would you would go through. Okay, so coming back here, and let me just I'll duplicate this slide. So let's say instead of measuring everything with respect to the instantaneous center of rotation, that we will instead measure everything with respect to the other the other points on here. Okay, so if we're going to come and and do this sort of thing, right? So we're going to say velocity of B is equal to velocity of A and B with respect to A. Which one of these cross products is it? So let's go ahead and find where VA is. So we know what VA is, right? It's it's this piece right here. So let's go find one that starts with this same piece. So here's that's starting with the same piece. So that's that's the VA piece of it. And then what is B with respect to A? So that is B 
rotating around A. So we're going to look for something that has the same omega, and then our position vector is going to be negative L and plus H. So that is plus L plus H. Yeah, that's going, that's right. Going to the left is positive and going up is positive. So this piece of it is going to be this piece of it. So we're going over and up. That's our, that's our position vector to find our new relative velocity. So this one is also going to be, this is going to add to velocity of B. So this is our velocity of B is equal to A plus B relative to A. Okay, so that's one of them. And this is kind of the main foundation of that chapter. So, so really study this example out of the book. And remember that practice versus the test. So if this is oriented differently or rotating a different direction, would you be able to see these vectors and be able to add together translation plus rotation those two vectors add together to the overall motion of the thing.